What do you know about the residential school system? How did it affect indigenous people, and why does it affect them today? How does understanding the system change your view of indigenous people? Should it? Your assignment is to consider these questions as you seek out a personal account from a residential school survivor. Great. You will tell their story. Seems like I just finished an essay on Jordan Tutu. Now this. Hey Mason, what's up? Not much. You? You look seriously bummed. Yeah, I guess I am. In just this assignment I got, I have to write a paper on a residential survivor, but I don't know anyone or any stories. May you can help? Have you ever heard of the story Fatty Legs or One Hours at Eight? Fatty Legs? What do Fat Legs have to do with a residential schools? It's a book by Margaret Pokiak Fenton. She was a re she went to a residential school at the age of eight. You should make a trip to the library. I knew many things when I was eight. I knew how to keep the sled dogs quiet while father snuck up on a caribou and to bring the team to him after a kill. I knew the sun slept in the winter and woke in the summer. And I knew that when the sun warmed Arctic Ocean shrugged off its slumbering ice, we would cross it to trade furs with the outsiders. But I did not know how to read the outsiders' books. It was not enough to hear them from my older sister, Rosie. I longed to read them for myself. Although I begged like a hungry dog after scraps, father would not let me go to the outsiders' school, like Rosie. He knew things about the school that I did not. But my name is Olamon, like the stubborn stone that sharpens the half-moon ulu knife used by our woman. I wore away at him all through the winter, and when the sun woke again and we traveled to trade with the outsiders, he reluctantly left me at their school. A black-cloaked nun cut my hair. I felt naked as my braids fell to the floor. Stripped of my warm parka, I was made to wear a thin pinafore and scratchy underwear, with stockings too small to stay above my knees. My Inuit name was taken, and I was to be called Margaret. All I had left was a beautiful book my sister read me about a girl named Alice. I hugged it to my chest and tried to be brave like the girl in the story. Every day for weeks, we woke very early for chores. Instead of sitting in desks, we scrubbed the floor beneath them. We washed walls and dishes in laundry, and then we went to church and kneeled on our already aching knees to clean our souls. I worked hard, but it brought me no closer to being able to read. When the first skiff of snow returned and my hopes were nearly dead, the kindly head nun led us to a classroom and told us to be seated. At last, we were going to read. Behind the teacher's desk sat the nun who had cut my hair. I didn't want her for a teacher, but I sat very tall so she would knew, know I was eager. A few older girls raised their hands, so I did too. The nun laughed and motioned me to stand up and read. Read? I couldn't even speak English. I scowled at her as the other girls giggled. Instead of learning to read that day, I spent the rest of the class with my nose in the corner and my stockings slouched around my ankles. The nun constantly gave me extra chores as part of my education, she said. But though my muscles ached from the hard work and I could barely keep my eyes open, she could not wear out my determination. I used every task as an opportunity to learn new words. I stuttered each letter of the alphabet before wiping it from the board. I looked at the labels on cleaning supplies and shouted out all the words. I even studied the writing beneath pictures in the hall. These things improved my reading, but I longed to read an actual book, my book. 
One evening, I hurried through my supper of cabbage soup, planning a hasty escape. I couldn't wait anymore. I dashed into the hall, but the nun was waiting for me. Not so fast, Margaret. There are pots to be scrubbed, she said in a threatening tone, and marched me to the kitchen. With my arms in scalding water up to my elbows, I couldn't hold my ba- back my frustration. I could be reading, I muttered. What? the nun demanded, her shoes creaking as she crossed the kitchen. She pinned me against the sink. Slowly, a smile spread across her thin lips. Fetch me cabbage from the basement, she ordered. I heard stories of children who disappeared down in the dark cavern. I descended each step deliberately, hiding my fear. My hands quickly found a cabbage in the shadows, and I scurried up the stairs. But she slammed the door, shutting out all light. I pulled the handle. It was locked. A scream built in my chest, but I held it in. I closed my eyes, pulled up my stockings, and breathed deeply until I could feel my father's presence. He wrapped his arms around me in the darkness, and I spelled out my Inuit name to him, whispering, O L E M A U N. His proud smile made me stronger, so I worked through the name of my distant home B A N K S I S L A N D. I spelled many things from home, and I was starting on the title of my book a l i when the door opened i squeezed past the nun and returned to the sink her angry black eyes raised goosebumps on the back of my shaved neck but she could not make me cry when i returned to the dorm room that night all the girls were giddy everyone had beautiful new dark stockings i pulled off my old ones took my place in front of the nun and held out my hands and closed my eyes. The nun cackled loudly as she handed my pair to me. Laughter instantly filled the room. They're they're red, I stammered in disbelief. Only serpent clouds wore red stockings. I ran to my bed and opened my book. I stared at the letters holding back my tears until those letters became words which grew into a familiar story. I could almost hear my sister's voice reading about the cruel cream and I let the story carry me far away from the laughter. The next morning, I crept quietly to breakfast, but an older girl saw me and called out fatty legs as bits of food fell from her mouth. Fatty face, I shouted back, F-A-T-T. The nun swooped in. If you cannot get along with the others, you can tend to the laundry, she hissed. I entered the laundry and stood beside the large vat with the fire cackling beneath it and then the idea came to me i knew what to do with my stockings i burned them to ashes i felt like alice after a bite of magic cake as large as the entire room when the nun saw my bare legs she exploded margaret put on your stockings she demanded i set my jaw and crossed my arms i can't why not i just can't Her face grew very red, and she ordered everyone to search the room, like the queen's henchmen in my book. They scurried around, upturning everything. Books were torn from shelves and blankets from beds. No one was calling me Fatty Lake now, and no amount of searching could ever bring those stockings back. The nun snarled when I was allowed another pair. In my new thick gray stockings, I felt victorious. But when I strode into class the next day, the nun slammed a book on my desk. It was a green reader like the other older girls used. Page 34, she said. She wanted me to cut down to size. I opened the book, nervously swelling in my throat. I looked at the words and began slowly twisting my tongue around the consonants and forming my mouth around the vowels. By the second paragraph, I confidently sliced through the words without a single moment of hesitation. There was no stopping me. When I finished, I looked up, but the nun was facing the blackboard. Sit down, Margaret, she said. I felt a great happiness inside that I dared not to show. I quietly took my seat. I was Ullman. 
conqueror of evil, reader of books. I was a girl who traveled to a strange and faraway land to stand against a tyrant like Alice. And like Alice, I was brave, clever, and as unyielding as the strong stone that sharpens an ulu. I finally knew this, like I knew many things, because now I could read. Okay, it's been a week ever since I gave you this project. What do you know on the residential school system? John Michael? Uh, if you weren't behaving, you would be punished. Good, good answer. My Air Force to your choice. Thank you.